This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Pete and Sebastian Show, what's up? We're back. We, we got to break protocol here. Good to see you, bro. But we got to get into it. Just talking. We got to stay on this. The the photos, the people you're meeting now. I saw the photo with you and the great Phil Mickinson, the golfer. And as I was saying, just when we started, it's, it, it, it's not even like you're now at these parties that they're at, too. These people are coming to see you, bro. It's like insane. It's like... You know, I mean, you, 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 you die, like, I'm dying to meet Brad Pitt, but it would be crazy if fucking Brad Pitt was, like, at my door dying to meet me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, anyway, man. man. And then, so it, yeah, you, go ahead, bro. Go ahead. We got to get into that other photo you just sent. So, welcome back to the Pete and Sebastian Show. We've been off for a couple of weeks here. Pete took a vacation, and uh, we played a repeat, or we played a, an archive show of uh, the COVID show. So, good to be back here, batting the ball around with Pete. Uh, yeah, Mickelson came to the San Diego show. Now, Mickelson came to see me about two years ago in Las Vegas. Uh, Pat, my opener, had pointed him out in the crowd. He goes, you know, Mickelson's here. I said, oh, cool. And then I see that he's sitting front row at the San Diego show. So I had um, my tour managers go out and, uh, and, and ask him if he wanted to come back. I wanted to meet him. So she goes out, and Sebastian would like to meet you. And he came back with his lovely wife. And... Uh, or in the dressing room, right? In my dressing room, just kind of shooting the shit. He's half Italian, this guy. Right? Really? <laughs> yeah. He goes, you know, my mother is Italian. I go, why aren't you promoting this? You know, like, yeah. I'm sorry. E- e- even though the name is Mickelson, if you're half Italian, you got to... Yeah. You gotta go with that, I, I, you know. And now, now I'm thinking about it. The guy's always got this like golden tan. That's like you, you, you can't control that with sunscreen. You're either non-sunscreen <laughs> or sunscreen. And I'm, I'm thinking like I, I'm seeing. But I gotta say, overall, what, what's the other half, by the way? I don't know, like, like Swedish or I, I, w- regardless of what the other half is. Yeah, but the other half a, is it's physically dominating. I don't look at him and think like that guy could like you know, would want to go to a uh, Italian restaurant with me. I, I I know, but I'm just saying if you're half Italian and it's buried, you got to bring that out. You, you, you got to I, I, you know like you're you're half Italian and and thank God your name and, and your looks would 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 yeah. justify right. You know, but but let's say if your last name was O'Malley. Right. Right? Yeah. And you yeah. look and you look the way you do. Aren't you going with the Italian on that? I think I'd have to change my last name to match the look. <laughs> yeah. I mean <laughs> otherwise, if you're spending all your time going, No, really, I'm half Italian, I'm half Italian it's not work. I mean I'm I'm trying to do a physical look on Phil Mickerson and think what I could do to make him look more Italian. Does he got a chain? I think he sometimes has a chain. <laughs> he's, he's got a big Swede look to him, guy. I look like I'd run into him on a fucking gull on a, on a, on a ski slope, don't you? With, with yeah, his no, red jacket skiing he, up to me. He don't have the Italian look. But what I'm saying, and to your point, I know, I know. Can you Italian it up a little bit? Maybe, maybe lose a button on on the on the polo shirt on tour, and hang a and hang a beautiful cross there, and maybe slick back the hair. I'm just saying, like, but but, but look at you now. It's so much more than that. You're leaning forward. You're moving your hands. It's like you you see, you can see it. If someone's real, I've seen really Irish people. But the way they carry themselves, I'm like, this this guy's got some Italian in him. You know what I mean? <laughs> you could, you, there's just stuff that we do with the hands. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so I'm oh. talking to him in the in the in the dressing room, and um, you know, we're talking about golf, and he goes, "Do you golf?" I said, "I just started probably about a year and a half ago." I go, but I got to be honest. I said, my hips and they don't move right. You know, I mean, you got to have like hip problems. No, and he goes, nah, man, I do, I do these stretches. 
and he starts showing me the stretches that he does in the in the dressing room. I mean, he he pulled up a chair and he put his leg up on the chair like 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 this. <clears throat> he, he, yeah, he's he's doing he's showing me stretches to open up the hip. And I even told him, I go, if you would have told me Phil Nichols would be in my dressing room showing me golf stretches, I would have said you fucking nuts. <laughs> That's it, man. I mean, even when you dream the dream and you go, I'm doing a movie with you all with De Niro, you don't realize all the great little stuff that gets sprinkled in, like Mickelson showing up and doing hammy stretches in the green room, <laughs> paddle ball, pickle ball with DiCaprio on a Wednesday. You know, those things come with that. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever perform for Stallone after all when you got rid of the Delta? <laughs> No, no, I didn't. I didn't. I, 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 I couldn't. Uh, I know coming. that was that was a shame. But now, what, uh, what? I'm sorry to interrupt you, but first of all, I'm blown away too by the level of a Phil Mickelson. Where not only do you know whatever show you go to, you're gonna be invited into the green room. There's gonna be. Sh it, 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 you you don't have to ask. Like most places, you go. Hey, can I go meet the star? You, they're coming to you. That's a level. That's a level unheard of, right? <laughs> well, I I want to meet them. You know what I'm saying? Like they're in the crowd, so like they're not asking to come back. I'm going. Phil Mickelson's in. Bring them back. I, I know that's the level of stardom. Though. I mean, you're probably at that level too on the other verse. But like that would be like me watching Billy Joel and getting a tap on the shoulder. I look at my <laughs> wife, go, "Here it comes." <laughs> uh, yeah, sure, sure. We had dinner plans, but yeah, I'd love to say hi to Billy. <laughs> I go to a show where I don't want to meet the guy. And tell my wife we got to sit in the back. I don't want to meet Barry Manilow after this fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that is oh, God. fun. And then you played the Red Rocks, dude. That place oh, looked God. absolutely if God could carve out a venue, man. <laughs> well he did. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> yeah, that was another uh I had oh god, I had a blast there. Um I was losing my voice. Uh two weeks ago I started losing my voice. I'm doing so many shows, bro. It's like yeah. it's just, it's like ridiculous. So I'm like, oh no. So I call up a friend of mine who's a singer, and I'm like, what do you use for voice? And he's like, a steroid. It's a steroid pack. And I went to go get the steroid pack, and it really it really helped not only my voice, bro, but it reduces inflammation. The steroid, right? Yeah. yeah. So I'm taking this thing. It's like a six day thing you did you take it for six days pills and uh i'm feeling like i hit a fountain of youth oh wow oh, yeah bro. <laughs> nothing hurt nothing hurts like the hip pain went away my shoulder i'm like what the f i'm thinking my dad if this is the way this feels Man. Why don't we go on a cycle? Oh, you know? <laughs> man. You just got to get one close friend to pop you in the ass in the stall before once, a, once right? Isn't that what A-Rod had done? Get me in the side right cheek. Bro, you would feel like a monster. I mean, you would feel so. Although, you, you feel in any, you don't feel any moments of rage. They say there's roid rage. You ever get that? Like where you just get overly mad for a second? I get overly mad without the roids. That's true. That's true. We'll, be able, we'll be able to tell the difference. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! So, so I'm on this stuff, and I'm like, my God! I didn't even like put it together, but like I would get out of bed, and I was like, you know, I don't know about you, but when you get out of bed and your feet hit the floor, yeah, it's it, it it's it's not like a. It, it's not like you go zero to 60 in four seconds. At this age, 48, it takes a while. The, the, the car's got to warm up. Oh, the car's yeah, warm absolutely. Up. It's like starting up the duster in 1975. <laughs> right. All right, absolutely. But, but with the roids, I'm, t I'm telling you, bro, I was like, I'm jumping out of bed going, where can I run today? You know, like, it's it was, wow. it was beautiful. Beautiful. So, no. Yeah. 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 So, so anyway, the, 
the reason I said that because the Red Rock is outside, and then I felt like I was straining my voice because when you're outside for some reason, I think it's a mental thing. You feel like you got to speak louder into the microphone because it's outside. But anyway, <clears throat> I end up. God, there's so much on the plate here. Sunday night, I am performing in Saratoga. Saturday, my tour manager gets a call. Joe Montana wants to, well, he's coming with a group of people. And the, the, the woman who was spearheading the group said, could, would, could we come back and say hello, right, before yeah. the show? Now, listen, <laughs> That's Joe, great. Joe, Mo, Joe Montana is oh. is got to be, he was my favorite quarterback growing up, even though I was a Bears fan. Love I love the I love the 49ers. The 80s 49ers teams to me, the Rice, the John Taylor, the Roger Craig, Ronnie Lott, that whole group loved them. And Joe Montana, I mean, what's not to love about Joe Montana? And he's Italian. He's, he's crazy. Then I feel then I find out Steve Mariucci's coming with him. Another Italian who used to coach the 49ers yeah, between the yeah. <laughs> So it's like, oh my God! You know who that guy was in that photo with Mariucci? Now that I think about it, who? That's the, the head coach of Michigan State basketball. What? What's his name? Oh man, I I, I can't Google because I'm using my phone with you. Uh, Hold on, I'll, I'll I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah, because I know Mariucci and this guy. I think they went to college together. They're best friends. What the heck is his name? The guy's a legendary college coach. Coach this is driving me nuts. Basketball coach? Yeah, Michigan State for years. He's not the coach anymore. It still is. They're great every year. Tom Izzo. Tom Izzo, man. Yes. Look at the picture. Doesn't that look like the guy? Am I right? Tom Izzo. I'm pretty sure. Oh, oh, oh. No, it's not him, bro. No? All right. Because I know they're best friends, and he looks a little like him, I thought. I don't think that's him. All right. Let me see on my... All right. Anyway. But anyway, you with... So, so they're, they're, uh, they're coming back. Now, I don't know sometimes what to tell, you know, talk about. I, I don't know what to talk about sometimes. Like, right. what am I going to the, the, the catch? Like, what, what, what do we say? You know? Right, right. <laughs> I mean, that's a, well, they're there to see you, though. Like, you could go the other route and just pretend you never watched football growing up. <laughs> well, I, I shook him, Joe Montana, saying, hey, hey, nice to meet you, Joe. I, there was no, it wasn't like, um, it was like I was meeting... You know, someone backstage. You know, I didn't go, hey, my God, a big fan and, you know, love, you know, the f Super Bowls and the whole thing. Right. Uh, and uh, we just, we talked about pizza. He's, 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 making, he's making his own pizza at the, at the house. <laughs> so can I ask you a question? <laughs> Do you mind me? Yeah. Do you mind? Well, why, why? You just said that, you know, that was my team growing up, and I was all about that. So when he walked back, why wouldn't you have told him that? It was a, a group of people. There, there was about nine people there. It was like his wife was there, Mariucci's wife was there. Just, right. there, there was, it, was, it was a lot of people. Right. It wasn't like a an intimate meeting where if I just met him and Mariucci, I would go up and maybe be a little bit more like fanned out about it, like hey, I'm a big fan of you guys or whatnot. But, but there's like, a lot of pe people but, there. But nothing about football, just right into pizza. No, one of the women said, "Oh, you got your own cooking show," and then Joe was like, "You cook?" I go, "Well, it's more like uh, learning how to." And he goes, oh, I went to this pizza place in in, uh, in New York City, and they, they gave me the recipe, and I'm making the dough at home, and it's very therapeutic, you know, cooking. Uh, I like to cook, and, and this, that, and the other thing. I go, man, yeah, I'm talking pizza with Joe Montana. <laughs> Is that what you said to him? No. Oh. 
I am not uh, understanding. I, Don't you think this guy might have walked down with his wife and she was like, not once? Not like, watched you growing up? Uh, no, I don't know. It, 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 the conversation went to, oh, I asked him. This is what I go. I go, did you do meet and greets before games? That's what I asked him. <laughs> <laughs> now, that would, if you said that to me and I was Joe Montana, I'd turn to my wife and go, honey, let's get out of here. This guy wants to be alone. He obviously wants to be alone. <laughs> That's what I would take from that. Well, he, goes, he goes, in my day, we didn't do meet and greets. You know, now everybody's in the locker room. In my day, we didn't do it. He goes, <clears throat> when, when I saw Denver doing interviews you know, in the Super Bowl. They were doing like interviews before the game or whatever. He's like, I knew I knew we, we were gonna we were gonna win just because, you know, they're they're out of their they're out of their heads. So uh yeah, it was like surreal almost, you know, just and then I'm like I'm like, I gotta go. Like I, the, the show's starting, you know? Like Yeah, yeah. By the way, I'd love to say to Montana, Denver was doing their interviews before the game because they knew they were gonna lose too, because they didn't have <laughs> Joe Montana. All right. <laughs> oh God. Well, man, so, now and then when you go out there, is it uh, that's it, right? That's set aside. It's not like you're doing one bit going, leaning forward, going, Oh, Montana's gonna love this one. <laughs> no, no, no. It was like off to the off to the races. So yeah, man, it's been a it's been a cool cool little run here a uh, little r run down just because like I said I was doing a lot of shows and then uh, I had my my dad with me for a week he came to Vail Colorado and then he came to Red Rocks and Denver came to Reno and then Vegas so he's been he's been having a ball and then um, today's my eighth anniversary congratulations <laughs> nice hey, what, what, are you, what are you at 20. 20 this year? No, last year was 20. I think we're going on 21 now. Oh, my God. 21. Can you believe yeah. 21 years know, you've been married? Man. I know, but how long were you dating Lana before you got married? Like two, three four years? years four See? years. So it's 12 years. We've known each other 12 years. Going out tonight. Um, she's got some surprise for me. And oh. it's cutting right into my therapy. I got a therapy at 4.30. Oh. Stands. <laughs> <laughs> you're, on, you're on roids, too, man. You really need someone <laughs> to talk you off a cliff right now. Oh, man, I, I got a sidestep here talking about health. So I went to go see a cardiologist yesterday because my primary care physician said, you know, since you have a um, heart disease in your family, it's hereditary, and I got some calcium buildup. I want you to go to see a cardiologist to do some uh, other testing, right? Yeah, yeah. So here's my uh, here's my deal. I go into the waiting room of this cardiologist into the doctor's room, right? And he's got a he's got a plaque on the wall. It says top ten cardiologist. Like it's like a top ten in the in the country, uh -huh. and and it says 2012. That's what I'm saying. Wait 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 wait. 2012 to 2018. So I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I love it. What, what happened in 19 and 20? Did, like, he lose people? Like, did people die? Like, what they, what they, what they were doing, the, the rankings, did they go, holy shit, seven people died on it? Get them off the top ten. How the, or, or is that plaque somewhere else? Do you think as a new as a new patient you could ask the doctor, hey doc, not not you know you got a you had a six year run here, you know, the, you know the, the 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 Bulls won six championships and then they lost Jordan. What what happened to you? Yeah, absolutely. When Jordan retired for the second time, they they suck. You know what I mean? It was a huge drop off. So. I, bro, I see those in such a great premise. First of all, unless you're in the top ten, uh, like if unless you're the reigning champion until the new plaque comes out, 
it, it shouldn't be on it, right? Like, because you, you, 2012, first of all, to 2019 is a great run. But now with two years removed, like you said, I'm thinking the guy that worked for you, that made you so great, finally his wife said, why don't you open up your own goddamn place, Ken? <laughs> Fucking Ken left. You're dropping like lead, and Ken's number one now, all right? And, and you're just waiting until all your clients figure that out. <laughs> right? That, that's what goes through my head. Or do they not do the awards anymore? Did they stop doing it because you were dominating, so they shut the whole thing down? <laughs> oh, oh, I don't know. Maybe the, maybe the new plaque's hanging in his office at home. You know, like to the, the, the 2019 and 20 right. plaque is somewhere else. So I'm sitting there going, easy. Is great. Am I getting this guy on the downturn? You know? <laughs> That's a lot. It sounds like it, man. It really sounds like it. You know? So, Who's the champ, right? I see that plaque. I want to Google right away. Who's the 2021 20, <laughs> cardiologist? <laughs> Google map me there, right? <laughs> so oh. uh, he comes in. And uh, he goes, all right, get the... Here, here's what I don't understand. Let me ask you this. He goes, get down to your underwear and put the robe on. Now, as he's saying that, I'm taking my shirt off, right? So the right. only thing I got left to take off is my pants and my socks. Right. right? Yeah. yeah. And he walks out of the room. Now, what do you think of this move? Going, you could stay. You know, like, wow. Why are we leaving? Like, yeah, I mean, it's it's not like I'm gonna get totally naked and go over a robe. I can see, okay, maybe that is uncomfortable. I got my underwear on. Where are we going? I'll do it right. I'll do it right here. And stay right here and get this thing going, right? I can't, bro, that's like when I'm at a crowded bar and my wife wants a lemon. Now the bartender's gone. She could have just, you know, gave us our drinks. We'd be gone. Now we're waiting all this extra time for the goddamn lemon. Same thing with the doctor. The minute you let him out of the door for a second, he ain't coming right back. You, he's not standing right on the other side. Timing out. Pants should be off by now. I'll come back. He's calling his wife, filing shit. Right? You would throw off his whole schedule if, if you said, just wait right here. Wait right here, guy. I had like six things to do before I came back. Wait, wait, wait right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! I I actually got two other guys. I told to take their pants off before I even came in here. They're waiting for me to come back in. <laughs> I got three three people naked down the down the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was gonna go pick up my Starbucks. I called in. Why? Thank you. Oh yeah, you should, bro. You should oh. just be like, they're off. They're off before. I, you know when you go in there and then he comes in and tells you that sometimes and then leaves. What if you are just already like that when he walks in, <laughs> just fucking nothing but underwear? Let's go. But by the way, it's so great that you. It's, it's like you're a company, but you're the product. Like, if you owned a company that made something and then you had health problems, they'd be like, well, whatever. We got a board of trustees. This, this company will keep humming along, making the product. But it, once, if you go down, the product stops, right? So you're, everyone's on top of you. You got the heart. I got the focals. All right. Bring in the massage guy. Fly him to Reno. <laughs> <laughs> like what they do with the president, you know what I mean? <laughs> Just gotta keep you propped up, guy. <laughs> so, so um, the reason I'm there is obviously, like I said before, is just to, for him to look under the hood, see what's yeah. going on, you know. Now, the heart for me. It's a big deal because father had issues, uh, grandfather had issues. So he goes, let me let me check you out. Now I, I want to pick your brain on this. He he takes the thing. And he's you know listening. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He threw out an interesting during the uh, during the you know like I'm breathing right. <sighs> Interesting. No, I can't. I can't I'm, I'm in the middle. Of the <laughs> 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 
that would, that would fuck up my whole breathing pattern. I, I'd start I'm hyperventilating. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh shit! I mean, where, where's the bedside manner? You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you're doing a bit on stage and you mess up halfway through, you don't go, "Oh fuck!" Right? You, 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 you. you, you. <laughs> well, listen. That's why I want to ask you: when you hear an interesting, yeah, on an exam. Is that generally a, a bad thing where, you know, or is that like an interesting where he goes, my God, this guy's taking in a lot of air and his heart's really responding to that in a really positive way. Interesting, you know, I know. or, or is it interesting? I don't hear nothing. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Well, I mean, when you think about it. I don't think even when I say to myself about something, I, do you ever catch, catch yourself saying to yourself, interesting, it, right? For me, it's always, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, what am I, Sherlock Holmes? I've never, I don't say interesting. So who, who is that for? I, I, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Well, he can't say what, the, if he says what the fuck, then I'm jumping off the table going, what the fuck, let's take me to the hospital, uh, right? Yeah, but then why, you, why is he saying anything? Shouldn't he keep that in and then take a deep breath and present it in a different way? Uh, you know? Well, he, he did. He goes, you know, you have a heart murmur. You, you know, you do you know you haven't been in the top number one since 2019. <laughs> if you want to go fucking toe to toe right now, Doc, I read two. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but you know, you had that, right? <laughs> I didn't know I had it. Well, wait, you had a heart situation already, no? Like an irregular I, heartbeat or something? No, calcium in, in the in the, uh, the widowmaker. You got a so, heart murmur, bro. I got a heart murmur. Well, he said no. Uh, and, I, and I said to him, I go, I've had doctors check me out before, right? Yeah. And no, nobody picked that up? Like, I've been through 48 years. And, and nobody, nobody's picking up the murmur? He yeah. goes, uh, you know, is this your first time seeing a cardiologist? I said, yeah. He goes, well, it's like we're in tune to that, you know, like maybe a, a general physician might not know right. what a heart murmur sounds like or what have you, but he goes, it's, it's not nothing, you know, don't worry about it, you're not going to die, but there, it's there. <sighs> okay, so I'm like, all right. So then he goes, uh, I don't know, second opinion on the heart murmur, man. Nah, that's not even the, the, the concern here on this thing. He goes, we could do an ultrasound here on the neck, and that will tell me if the 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 veins in your neck are enlarged, and that gives me a good indicator of what's going. I don't know. I guess the the the, the neck muscle, the neck um, arteries or ner veins or whatever are associated with the heart. And it's a way for them to tell if there could be some inflammation and what have you. So he does, the the woman's doing the the thing. And I go, oh, it's, uh, this ain't gonna, this ain't gonna be good. I just, I, in my head, I'm like, this ain't gonna be good. Yeah. So, so he comes in, he goes, uh, yeah, they're, they're thicker than they should be at your age. <laughs> <laughs> I really so like doing this cast, guy. <laughs> Here, no, this, this is this is. <laughs> so I go to him. I go, is that a is that a problem? He goes. <laughs> I go. Oh, are you concerned? He goes. I'm concerned about all my patients. I'm concerned about my wife, my my kids. You know, I'm I'm concerned. But I go. He goes. Don't don't don't. Uh, leave here thinking you're going to drop dead tomorrow. It's not the case. It's just, that's what I'm seeing. And I go, but honest to God, and this is where I start getting deep. Yeah, yeah. I go, when you walked in here and you looked at the screen in your head, did you go, fuck, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to think that they're thinking like something 
and then they got to process it and filter, and then it comes out in one way, right? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, but <laughs> I think he's also very honest, man, you know? <clears throat> yeah, but, like, if, you know, he doesn't, he's got to mitigate worry. So does he go, oh, wow, I didn't expect this, and then he goes, yeah, they're a little larger for someone your age. Or does he look at it and go, hmm, well, inside, in his head. I know. I I like to think the way, like, you start a show and you know, for example, I'm going to do a little about where I am, a little, little dance here, then I'll come in heavier. I like to think a guy at that level knows. I'll put a little scare in him because it is a little more higher than normal, but I will let him know he's not going to, nothing's going to happen. But now he knows we have to be, uh, we have to start changing our diet. And we have to start doing some certain things. You know, we can't just well, walk out of here skipping thinking I'm fine. I like Well, that's, I don't like the gray area. I'd rather him go, come in and go, wow, you, you got to start eating fish. You know, like that, that's. <laughs> you got to move to Greece, guy. <laughs> I mean, literally move to Greece. That's the only <laughs> shot you got making it past 70. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather have someone scare the shit out of me, even if even if it's not even warranted. Scare the shit out of me, so I go home going, babe, throw out the pasta, throw the meat out, go give me some salmon. You know, like that's <laughs> yeah. what I want to. That's what I want to hear. So he goes, we should just do a stress test, and that's when you get on the treadmill, right? Have you ever right. done one of these? Yes, I have. Yes, but I mean, okay. not, af not after I had a. A, a baby wand on my throat, and I, and I was told I have a murma. Then I didn't put on the sneakers and hop on. No, <laughs> no. He says you gotta come back. You come back. He, he goes. We'll do a. You know, we want to see how your heart responds. You know. Uh -huh. we'll do, I, now, now here's my next question. I go. You ever, you ever have to rush anybody to the hospital? Off the treadmill. <laughs> I'm thinking this is a recipe for a heart attack, right? Like, uh, yeah. You, That's the best see, place to have uh, one, though, bro. On the treadmill in front of the 2019 cardiologist of the year. There's only two other scenarios I could think of better than that. Being in front of the 20 and 21 women. <laughs> uh, oh, God. So, uh... <clears throat> So he goes, no, I wouldn't put you on this thing if you were going to pass out. But right. I just want to see how your heart responds to, uh, you know, un under stress. It's so, do it yet? No, no, no. I got I a schedule to go it's, back in there. No. You're going to feel like Ivan Drago, bro. And it's great for you because you don't have any chest hair because they're going to put those things all over you. And you just jog in place with, like, Ys on your chest. I, I think that's how I remember it. It's yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, did, do you remember you being spent and exhausted on the thing? No, it's like, you know, we always joke about leaving a hotel room so clean the maid don't even know if we slept in it. It's the same yeah, thing yeah. with the machine. I was trying to be like, the, I, I wanted the guy after three minutes to go, shut it off. It's, I will fucking die. I miss it. That's a joke. Did you work out? Did you run here? I ran here, guy. What are you kidding me? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, Matt Damon burning the, burning the equation. Go, you know how easy this shit is for me? <laughs> <laughs> That's like oh, when I got my God. hip replacement and the rehab guy came in and he's putting a rubber band on me. This is my third day home or fourth day home. And he's putting a rubber band on my leg and he's got me on my kitchen chair and he's going, now move it forward and I'm moving forward. And I'm looking at Jack and I look at him and I go, guy, I mowed my lawn yesterday. And he, he goes, oh, all right, yeah, yeah. I go, wait, wait I'm not 75. This is like, <laughs> he goes, yeah, this is mostly for older people, so. But anyway, back to this murmur situation, moving forward, what is it, just a diet change? It's no, like, pills and all that stuff, right? Well, you know, he had, he had he suggested, you know, you could get on a statin, like a Lipitor or something like that. Oh, uh, right. But for me, I don't know. I said, Doc, I don't know. I, I'd rather yeah. deal with this with with diet and exercise. I don't like it. I'm, on, I'm not on any medications. I hear you. Um, so we'll see. I'm just gonna like kind of watch, watch my. Um, I, I, I'm I'm reevaluating my health right now. I'm looking at other options as well. Uh, I met a guy last night, a super interesting guy who 
analyzes your blood and looks at what your deficiencies are and kind of creates a um, program to address some of the things that you're lacking. Right. And the one, number one thing is inflammation. You know, I mean, you know, like my, I got arthritis. I have, uh, uh, you know, my hips hurt and whatnot. And this could all be due to foods that I'm eating uh, with folic acid. He mentioned this folic acid is on a lot of the foods that we eat and 55% of the country can't digest folic acid. So it reappears in other ways. I mean, again, yeah, this guy wow. had so much information, right? Yeah, yeah. And now I'm trying to regurgitate it back to my sister, or my mother, or whoever I'm talking to. And do you ever like listen to somebody who's giving you a lot of information, a lot of percentages, a lot of uh, facts, and you try to regurgitate that to other people, and you just like know half of what he said? Uh -oh. Yeah, so then I, I fill it with adjectives. Like, I say half of it, and I go, it's like a, a big deal. It's like serious shit. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, he said something about Alzheimer's yesterday. He goes, you don't lose your memory. Your memory is still there. You just lose access to your memory. And what happens is, and I forgot what he said. So I, I do, I, I, <laughs> this is how I do it. I go, so what happens is, is something with sugar and da, da, da. You know, like, I, I'll do it, da, da, da. <laughs> You're making it sound like, I could tell you, but I'm not going to bore you with that part. You'd be <laughs> grateful I'm doing the editing for you. <laughs> 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 the that 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 is like I don't know what the hell he said. I wish I did, but I'm yeah. the that 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 is something that I gotta go find out now. <laughs> right. So uh, well, anyway, well. it's a re it's a reevaluation over here. The health, the whole health thing, and uh, that's where I'm at. What's going on with the vacation? Well, did did we? Have, did, <laughs> was this? I I got text that the, the weather was fucking it up for you. Uh, yeah, it's campus for sale. <laughs> it's all the, the pop ups for sale. I'm done camping. We're done camping, bro. We, we almost got a divorce. Not really, but it's just. <laughs> <laughs> it was just sucked. Um, but listen, I, but before I get into that, I mean, we had a great time. We made the most of it. And at the end, we stayed at this awesome resort in Lake Placid and had a blast. And the guy. The guy two doors down was a cast guy, you know, loves the cast. It was a great time. But the rain, in a nutshell, I don't want to, in a nutshell with the camping, I, um, we took it too far. Right? We went to the well one too many times, you know what I'm saying? We went back to where we were, and it's nice, but we've seen it a million times. And then we brought so much shit this year, dude. I brought a rake. Okay, I was raking my campsite to make it look nice. I was doing yard work at my campsite <laughs> on day two. I had a clothesline going, drying clothes. I had a, uh, I blew up a raft um, where the only electricity is in the men's room. So I knew that from last year. So I brought an extension cord, ran it through the window of the men's room, plugged in where you use your razor. Ran it out, just blowing up a three-man raft with adults walking by to use the restaurant. Just, 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 just constantly working and working and working, never hanging out, having to put it all away at night because the bears might come out and get the food, which they never do. It's just too much work, dude. So, so, but you brought all this stuff, so you had it in your head that you were going to rake. So I did. I, you know, we just we went on the longest one yet. We went for ten days camping, and then at the end of the ten days, we were going to end it up where we got this uh, staying in this resort in Lake Placid, right on the lake. It's called the High Peaks Resort. They even take your dog, but it's upscale. I can't explain how they do it, man. But it's it, so we were looking forward to that. But when we're at the campsite, <clears throat> and it just kept raining, and when it wouldn't rain, Jackie was just constantly on a phone going, okay, it looks like 24% chance at, at 1, so we might have to cover everything at 1, then we can undo it at 2.30, and, you know, it's like that kind of shit going on. And then we wake up one day, and it's nice, but the next three days are going to be rain. So she's like, I can't, Pete, I can't stay in this camper anymore. And there's this town called Saranac lake 
in the middle of the Adirondacks. It's like a cute little town. It's a real mountain town. So we're like, all right, we'll go stay there for a few days, right? Now we got the dog. So there's like a nice hotel in Saranac. They won't take the dog. Then there's a Best Western, just dumb, bro. Such a shit. Bro. And that's where we got to stay because we got the oh, dog. Oh, God. Uh, this place oh. was so nasty. My eight-year-old daughter wasn't taking her. Wouldn't go barefoot. Kids go barefoot in, in, in manure. And she <laughs> wouldn't take her feet off. Of huh. My... I, and I would have it down to a system where my flip-flops would be on the side of my bed. So when I had to get up and pee at night, by the way, I took, I brought a cast t-shirt and it just happened to be the one. I showed Jackie and Sadie how you tie it around your pillow. So your t-shirt becomes your pillowcase. So your face never touches the pillow. Oh, and, wow. and then we're laying in our bed. And I go, when you come out of your bed, I got I to gotta tickle with my big toe, the ground, to, oh. find, to find my flip-flop. And when I find the left one or the right one, I can figure out, I slide them in. Then I go pee and I come back and I slide out of them. Oh, God. sitting there in the rain. I walk the dog at 10 o'clock at night. I'm coming back in the front lobby, right? And as I come in, there's four dogs, all different owners, all off the leash, running around in this nasty rundown lobby. And the woman behind the counter going, oh, they're so cute. They're all friends. And the one owner's like, they should all stay in one room together. I pulled the dog back out, went back out, hung out, you know, smoked a little <laughs> in the parking lot. When I came back 20 minutes later, the girl behind the counter goes, you little guy afraid with those big dogs? And I go, no, nah, I just figured you didn't want that many dogs in your lobby at once. I mean, it was just a shithole, bro. It was, I, oh. I, was, I was apologizing to my daughter. Sorry. Oh, bro. my God. Oh my God! But we went <laughs> hiking and stuff during the day. But and then when we can finally check into that other joint, the last three days were just fabulous, man. But yeah, so that was the. Because I got a message, yeah. I think on Instagram, someone going, "Is Pete in Lake Placid?" I I think I saw him in the parking lot. I, was this this guy? Well, uh, I actually, dude, it's like uh, more and more people. There was like a few people in Lake Placid. I was in some middle of Hobunk, uh, Hidden Valley, tiny little nowhere town about a uh, half hour from me at a carnival. Sadie's about to do the thing where you throw the balls and try to knock, a, uh, pop the balloon with darts. The guy hands me the darts and he goes, love the cast. You guys don't ever stop. You and Sebastian gets me through on the road doing this. The freaking <laughs> balloon guy. Jeez, nice man. Yeah, man, we got we're like we're in with the carnies, bro. <laughs> you, you, you're in with the fucking president. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> and then, Holy shit. Yeah, and then we ended up. Uh, it's funny, and we ended up, um, like I said, in Lake Placid, and you get these rooms that you can get that are right on the lake. So you come out and there's grass, and then they have like all sorts of. Um, Stand up paddle boards and stuff you can use. But like the first day, I got my big cooler, my Playmate cooler from camping in the hotel room, and I got to drain it. So I was just about to drag it out onto like the little patio area right there and drain that bitch right in front of everybody. Uh, and then a guy, real nice guy, ended up being a nice guy. He said, love the cast. Uh, and then his wife was like, he, he talks about it all the time. I was like, hey, thank real nice guy. And then he walked by and he was two doors down. I'm like, oh my God. I was about to white trash this place up. Now this chaos <laughs> listed is, I'm bringing the cooler in the shower. And Jackie's like, why are you bringing it in here? Drain it outside. I go, there's a guy who listens to the cast out there. I can't see him. My Playmate cooler pulling the plug. I, I put a flip flop on the one end of the cooler, bro. So it dang, so it flows down. And then I come back 10 minutes later to get it. Uh, <laughs> Holy I'm the guy shit. taking all the ice out of the cooler at 5.30 in the morning, <laughs> so you can't even get a little for your uh, whatever, for your drink. And uh, So anyway, man, we made the most of it. We had a great time. All right, I've never been to Lake Placid. Now, Lake Placid, obviously, it was the spot of, I, th I think, the 1980 Olympics, if I'm not mistaken. Where, uh, yes. yes. Okay. Now, is this place since the... Since the 80s... Have they done anything? I mean, like, is it a place to go? Well, there's, there's the, the Lake Placid is a big lake, and then, but what we were right next to it, it's called Lake Placid Village, but there's a tiny lake called Mira Lake. 
And this thing, it's not big at all, maybe like a mile and a half, two miles, but no motorboats allowed on this thing. Only like paddle boats, paddle boards, electric motor if you want. So when we came out of our hotel room, and it's still usually like, like literally like a mirror, I couldn't believe it. It was like a sunny Saturday morning, and there was, I'm not kidding you, had to be 150 people on this entire lake with paddle boards, dogs on the end of the paddle board, looking oh. for, you know, <laughs> jumping in, jumping out, and these homes all around it that were just stunning, you know, just, oh, God, man, beautiful homes, so... Uh, and then on the other side of the road, just a little bit down, is much bigger Lake Placid, that lake where you can have motorboats on. And all around it, like you'll see if you're driving, like you'll see the old ski jump that they had for the Olympics. And Oh, that's still there? Yeah, like you can do a thing where you go down a bobsled that's like the, where they went down. So, you know, there's but remnants of the Olympics. But uh, And there's still great skiing there in the winter, man. It's a great place to ski. Oh, but yeah, man. it's beautiful, dude. Beautiful. So, so, the, so you're selling. The, so you're selling the camper on it. That you've had it. I'm selling. Yeah, I got in the driveway right now, drying out because it was so uh, nasty. And uh, I said to Jackie, I don't want to store this thing anymore. And she goes, Well, it's just good to have. If we ever want to go, we see it's not going to be raining. We just want to go for a day or a uh, night or two. I go. That would mean around here. I don't want to camp around here. I'm done, I'm done camping. I'm done camping, bro. Done, I'm done yeah, wa waking up, making a fire and putting my coffee on and waiting for it to bubble. And <sighs> it was a good run. <laughs> and I might like it again sometime. And people who camp, keep it up, man. I just can't anymore. I'm beat down. <laughs> Yeah, man. It sounds like you know that that outdoorsy Pete is uh, really getting accustomed to, you know, hotel life, service, room service. It, it was nice. I mean, we checked in. I sat in the lobby. I told the Jackie, I go, I'm literally fighting a tear of joy trickling down. My <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got one quick little incident, man. So I'm walking the dog one day. Uh, in Lake Placid. <clears throat> Even then, people who have their dogs in this place we were staying, every dog was like clean and bathed and behaved, you know? You were in the Best Western in Saranac. It was a pit bull rolling down the fucking aisle, man. Literally. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I'm walking the dog early in the morning, <clears throat> and I come across this coffee shop right by the hotel. Quaint little, like, old house. Open from 8 till 12, it says. It's like 11 o'clock. He's got a sign that says... Mask required, even if vaccinated, right? Right out of the gate, that bothered me. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and I don't have a mask on me, but I'm like, I'm fucking going in. I'm going to see what's going on with this guy. So, or person, whoever. So I tie the dog up. I go in. There's an old guy sitting down at the table, sipping his coffee. The guy behind the counter, as I come in, I see him putting on his mask. And I walk in, and I look at him, and I kind of do that, like, oh, do I need a mask? And he goes, yep, even if you're vaccinated, you need one. And I'm like, I don't, I don't have one. He goes, well, you need one. And I go, well, guess I'll get my coffee somewhere else. And I turn to walk out, and then I turn back, and I go, <laughs> by the way, you didn't have your mask on when I walked in. Yo, I go, yo, yo. And he goes, that, that's because I know him. And I go, could... Do you know how dumb that sounds, man? Do you have any idea how dumb that sounds? And I turned and walked out. But, I mean, that's where we're at now, bro. You're just alienating me because I'm from out of town. But if you knew me, I could be in here without a mask. <laughs> God damn. At this point, though, everybody, you know, just get vaccinated so we can just get on with this shit. Oh, you know, God. whether you want to or not, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, I do care. Everyone has their own right, and I get that. So I do get that. But, man, this shit and, uh, is it's, dragging it's... on! <laughs> <laughs> right, bro? I just want to know... <sighs> This thing lives in anything. I don't know. It's it, eighteen months, and not one. There's nothing on the news that goes. Oh, breaking news! It changed. The variant now is weak. You know, it just seems like oh, here it goes. We got another one. It's good. Oh my god. <laughs> 
It doesn't and sound yeah, right. The, the place we go with our, our pool, the club where we go to the pool, they leave an email uh, the other day. Eight, it's 87 degrees the day we get home. We can't wait to go to the pool. And they're like, uh, sorry, the pool's closed today. Thanks for understanding. Bunch of parents email, go, we don't understand. It's 87 degrees. And they go, oh, well, you know, with COVID. What? What the, is there COVID in the pool? You stop using COVID for everything. Everyone's using COVID, bro. I can't take I it. I know. Anymore. I know, man. It's it's a shame. I asked the doctor yesterday, the cardiologist. I said, I've had the vaccine, and then I have COVID after that. I go, can I get it again? He goes, yeah. I go, what? <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> he goes, well, well, you know, we could test your antibodies, but you know, you're probably gonna need a booster. A booster? How, how much? How much am I gonna boost? <laughs> yeah, I, I thought you were like, I, I thought you could walk through a COVID field naked. <laughs> that's what I. That's what I thought. I mean, come on. At the very least, I thought he'd say, yeah, you could get it again, but you won't even know you have it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. So, screwed up. It is. So what? The what? what so, go ahead. Um. Yeah. So that's that with the vacay. I, you know, it was a great time, but we made the mess. We made the best of it. I don't know where else to go. That. Sorry for the break. Uh, for all the listeners. No, that's that's fine, man. We needed a, we needed a little break. I mean, geez, it's been. Uh, I'm not complaining, but uh, we've been hitting the ground running here for for a while, and then um, I'm gonna have this movie. We gotta figure out what we're gonna do with the movie here, what and how we're gonna, how, how we're gonna do the cast. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I, it's a, uh, that's I, I understand your situation, man. I mean, you know, it's not like you're gonna go, Bobby. Can we rush this scene? I got kids. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I saw this great photo, and somebody it was great because of what somebody from the cast wrote. But there was a picture of De Niro, and they go, first shot of De Niro out in public since his leg injury, and like he's reading the paper or something, and he's in loafers with no shorts, and uh, the someone wrote below. Uh, the transformation begins. And I'm telling you, <laughs> it did. It looked like your dad, except for the face, the neck down, the whole body, the way he was walking. That could have been your dad getting the paper at the end of the driveway, man. Oh, God. He might be doing it. He might be in character already. He might be doing it, man. I mean, I was like, gosh, if you look from the knees down, that's the old man. <laughs> So yeah, that's oh, exciting. Man, so when, oh, is man. that all? Does that have an official startup date? September twentieth. Wow, man. Jesus. So we're like we're less than four weeks out on this thing. Oh my god, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's probably good that you're so busy, man. It keeps you from getting overly in your head about it. Yeah, you know, I'm taking I'm taking uh, twice a week. I'm working with my acting coach to you know work on the lines and what have you. So, uh, shit, yeah, man, I'm getting nervous though. I'm not. I mean, it just it's a big undertaking for me. I've never done anything like this before. So, we'll see. Uh, we'll see where that goes. God, I had something else to tell like you. Sinatra. At times, I've bitten off more than I could chew. That's that's just when you know you're in it, dude. You that's that's. <laughs> That's when you know you're in it. You got all this stuff going on. <laughs> we zip lined. I meant to tell you that. Do you have a zip line? Yeah, man. F tell me about it. Where, where were you in this vacation? Yeah, but again, because Sadie was like, I'm so nervous that I go, that's living. You want to put yourself out there. That's, that's when you know you're alive. But yeah, we were in the Adirondack Mountains way up. They put you in the you know, ATV and they take you way up. And, uh, you know, we're doing it from treetop to treetop. My daughter, are you kidding me? Every, everyone else there was, uh, the second youngest was like uh, 17 years old. She's eight years old, 70 foot peak, where there's one zip line where the guy goes, this is a little different. You, you got to walk to the end of this. They have this man-made platform in a tree, you're 70 feet up. And when you get to the end of it, you jump out, and he goes, you have to jump away. If you jump straight, you're going to come straight, and you'll hit your butt on the peak. So jump out. The zip line's going to pull you about 10 feet across down the line, but you're not going to go all the way to the other side. And then this mechanism is going to drop you, and you're going to free fall for a second, and then it's going to slowly bring you all the way down. So he goes, it's going to be really scary, but there's all you have to do is jump out. You don't even have to hold your harness. 
And then uh, he goes, I'll go first. And then he's there. And then there's a woman last. And he just jumps out. And like I said, it, it kicks in and it just slowly lets you down. And then they're like, who's going to go first? And you would a group of like eight people. Like I said, Sadie's the only other one. And uh, I go, I'll go. They go, you go first to me. <clears throat> and I'm like, I go out there. And it's like, you don't have to do anything. You close your eyes and just jump and you're going to be on the ground. Two seconds safely and softly. But as you get to the end of that platform and you're 70 feet up, you, you, you st- and the platform like narrows as you get at, towards the end of it, you start to get in your head like, holy shit, holy shit. And I get to the end and, I'm, and I look down like, whoa, man, you know, I can't curse, I got the kid. And the guy's like, it's nothing, Pete, go ahead, you know? And I literally had my shades on, but I mm-hmm. closed my eyes. And I skydive, dude, but this was scary too. And I closed my eyes and you jump and then it slowly brings you down. Now, Sadie's next, eight years old, just goes for it. Man, I'm so proud of this kid. She was awesome. Nine adults the rest of the way. Jackie's third. Won't do it. She, she's been ziplining all day, but this jump, she won't do it. She's, she's getting anxiety. She's like, I can't do it. I can't do it. Uh, and the woman's like, you got this. And then and, and there's a path that leads down. And the woman's like... And Jackie's like, I'm just going to go down the path. And the woman's like, well, the path, the path can be even more dangerous. The path, and, and Jackie's getting pissed. She's like, I'm a grown woman. I see the path. It's not dangerous. I'll take the path. Like, she, she gets pissed when a 25-year-old yeah. mountaineer is going to talk her into it, you know? <laughs> yeah? Like, a little later on, there was another platform that she didn't want to jump off. And the woman's like, that's the end of the whole thing. And the only way you can get down is that. And, and Jackie leans over to me and goes, if you need me to get up, if I need you to get me a fucking ladder, you're going to get me a fucking ladder. She, like, yeah, she was like, but yeah, so she was the only one that wouldn't do it. And they walked it down the other side. But yeah, was, where did you do it? Uh, in Mexico with Lana and La Cabo. This was ooh, six years ago. And I don't know if this happened to you at all, but... I don't do well in these things. Like, you know, there's some people are like naturals. Yeah. They just get out there, they're like one hand in it, right? <laughs> yep, yep. So, <laughs> <laughs> you got the move. That's right. <laughs> so, we do like a tandem. It, like Lana's in front of me, <clears throat> right? And she's she's got. I got my my feet underneath her armpits. So we're going together. Down this thing, right? Uh Uh-huh. And the guy goes, if you stop, and I'm like, stop. I like, we're we're in like a canyon. Yeah. Yeah. If you stop, don't worry about it. Just pull yourself in. Right. You turn. They showed us that too. When you pull and yeah. Yeah. All right. We stop. Now, there's nothing worse than dangling on a cable over, you know, a canyon, and I ain't moving, right? Yeah, see, now... In, in Mexico. That is the key right there. You know what I'm saying? You know who put that cable up? Whoever was the cheapest, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, uh, least amount of pesos. Is the tree it's even tied to sturdy? Don't know. They were all drunk on tequila when they put it up, guy. No regulations. Good luck. (laughs) That's what I'm saying. I'm sitting there going, I was panicking because I'm like, can it hold the weight right now? Like, you know, so I'm, I'm literally moving like, and Lana's attached to me. So I'm moving like the two of us. Right. (laughs) And, And you know, since we're weighted down, I'm I got I'm going uphill on this thing. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm I'm shimmying it up, up the up the hill, <laughs> panicking because I'm like, what if we don't get back? There's obviously a guy that will come and right. get you and do this, but in my head, I'm like, I, I gotta get. <laughs> Do you got the nasty gloves on that they give you oh, when you, yeah. oh, oh yeah. God, you slide your hands into those. I mean, oh, yeah. gee, if there was a pandemic <laughs> back then, forget it. Oh, fuck. Uh, but it's, uh, 
It's, I don't think that's, I don't think I'll ever do that again. I don't think I need to do it again. Like, I enjoyed it, and it was a lot of fun, but got it, did it, you know, that kind of thing. I wasn't scared, had a great time. I, if a guy I knew owned the thing and he said, come with your family alone, I'd probably do it again. But, you know, you're with a whole bunch of people and you're waiting for your turn. It's like, I don't know, man. For me, it's like, why put yourself in these situations? Why be the news story? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Well, wow. like, like, in Lake Placid today, unfortunately, a cable snapped and a family plunged to the, you know, I, why, I know. why do you want to put yourself there? You know what I'm saying? Uh, well, I, I did say to the guy next to me doing it, I was like, you know, it's funny. I do this with my 10 year old, my eight year old, and people are like, that's great that you're showing her this kind of stuff. I go, but God forbid something happened. Everyone who said that would be going, what kind of parent <laughs> takes their kids zip line in an eight. <laughs> but, but I'm so, even though we're out on this beautiful mountain and it's a beautiful day and we're zip lining and doing this great experience, I'm still like, you got this like I do. There's, he tells us there's nine lines. And after the ninth zip, you're done. So, and we got th about nine of us, but we're in four groups, uh, people, like, you know, two people together, three over here. And like, every time we go to do a zip, maybe they go first, they go, and I go to Jackie, just, we want to go first on the ninth. That's when you want to go for all this, all this other shit don't matter. Cause each time we go, we got to wait till everyone gets to the next tree platform. So by the time we got to the ninth one, the guy's like, who wants to go first? And he looks over and uh, they're like, why don't you guys go? You haven't gone first. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know what that? And as we zip, I look at Jackie. I go, we just saved ourselves a half hour. We're going to be halfway down the road before the last guy zips. <laughs> Nobody sees that. It's like Larry Bird seeing five <laughs> steps ahead. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're calculating moves, man. You're like, oh, we get this, and then we don't have to wait. Because you, you don't have to wait for them, right? You could just go right to your car from there. At that point, they go, just drop your helmet off and your gloves, and, uh, you know, on your way out, you're right there. I'm like, all right, thanks for everything. Boom, gone, you know? I, oh, I'm pulling beautiful. out. Go, Jack, they're still zipping. <laughs> you know? So, oh, shit. But, yeah, I don't think I need to do that again either. But you're right. He's like, and if you... When the guy's showing you, too, you ever see that he lets himself go and he just looks over at the sun? You know? <laughs> he, he thinks he looks so cool, right? He does look kind of cool, but, you know, in my head, I'm like, wait, what are you going to do when the winter kicks in? What's the plan? Bartend? Bartend? <laughs> then do this again next year. <laughs> You know those kind well, of dudes? Well, well, that's seasonal work, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And they, so these, these guys ain't doing this day in, day out. This is, you know, you, you might get a new guy that just started this summer, right? And he's yeah. going to and he's gonna take you across. He knows what to do. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, man. They are. Uh, and then you start, like, the two we had, there was a guy and a girl, and I'm telling Jackie, you think they're fooling around? The way they're doing their little banter? I feel, I go, I feel like she wants to be with him, but he's got a girl back home. <laughs> and, you know, and he's, it's, anyway, <clears throat> good to be back uh, hanging, brother. Good to be back. Good to be back. You got any shows coming up? I do, man. I'm hitting the road hard starting uh, next weekend all the way up through Christmas. I'm going to be in Dallas, Cleveland, uh, Toledo, duh, 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 Portland. By the way, I meant to ask you. Do you do any of your shows, um, like I was told the theater I'm playing in Portland, that they that now the new mandate is the audience is going to have to wear a mask. Do so you, I, just had the, I just had this in Vegas where they're supposed to have a mask on in the, and they, they didn't have masks on. Right, right. Because I'm, I'm, I mean, I can, uh, uh, I can see a lot of different things, but I mean, I, I I don't even know if they're into it. Like that just seems like a little too much. Like as far yeah, as think, maybe maybe I don't. I, anyway, I don't. Think, I don't think you're gonna have to worry about it. I think people are. You know, some people just wear the mask throughout the show. Some people take them off. I don't think uh, it's not gonna be a problem for you. Is uh, all yeah. your web? Is all your dates on your website? Um, I, uh, not all. Uh, most of them, I think. But uh, let me see. Oh, I have it right in front of me. I'm putting that together. Annapolis. Boston, Minneapolis, Cleveland, Dallas, uh, Syracuse, Charlotte, Rochester. 
Yeah. All right, so you're bouncing around. I am. I'm getting it going, man. I'm looking forward to it. I might have some other good news to share next week. Hopefully. Nice, nice. Um, um, way to go, bro. I'm like really enjoying the Instagram and all the craziness going on, man. Oh, thanks, bro. It's been uh, it's been really exciting. Um, Lana and I are going out tonight. Happy for our anniversary. anniversary! One more time. Yep, and we will uh, we will report back next week with this big. She got a big surprise. She said it was once in a lifetime at four fifteen today, and I had to cancel my therapy for it. So I don't know what this could be, bro. Oh man, I think I think your meeting's still on today. I said that. I told I I told uh, who did I tell? I was talking to my sister. I go, Lana's got a surprise, once in a lifetime. I said I could be meeting Rocky. No, I, I, and I tell you, uh, uh, just a slight runner up. I got no problem if it ends up being Travolta, bro. <laughs> I, I, I know you waited on him one time, but to be hanging with him, hanging with him, no, no, I'll do a Travolta. I, you know, a Travolta, a pit. Oh, by the way. I'm almost done with green light. Makane. Oh, yeah. What do you think, man? This guy's fighting African village champions uh, wrestling. It's insanity, right? I mean, <laughs> the, you know, uh, what the hell is he doing there? What about, what about <laughs> when, he, when he was with that family in Australia with those lunatics oh, living yeah, out in the yeah. middle of nowhere? Uh, I know, man. This guy's lived a life and a half. I got to tell you, though, and I don't know if you felt like this, but when he described that he shaved his head, remember? When he shaved his head yeah. and he was bald, and he goes, yeah. you don't know what's under there. He had, like, psoriasis. He had a couple nicks in his head. I got to tell you, it's really interesting. I wouldn't mind shaving my head once just to see what kind of scalp I got. Yeah, I've always been interested in that myself, too. <laughs> You know, it's like, <laughs> good God, is that a tick bite from 1975? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's in there. That's like, I know every part of my body, all, all in my legs. I know what's on my leg. I don't know what's on this part of my body. Yeah. Skin wise. Yeah. Just be, be nice to just get up in the morning and put oil on your head. <sighs> And then, and, and, and also, as it's growing in, you get a good aerial view of, all right, what's doing well and what's not? Like, you know, as he, said, he said it all grew back. Uh, yeah, he even said. Even more full. Yeah. That's what, another reason I wanted to get it, to see if it comes back fuller than it did before. But anyway. Um, uh, can I say I one thing? What, what about yeah. when, he was, um, when he was saying he had, the, he had the pickup truck and he would go mudding? And all the girls loved to go mud, and then he bought the sports car, traded in for the yeah. pickup, and he would lean against the sports car, and no one was interested. And he goes, I realized why I was leaning. I wasn't doing. Traded it back for my truck and went mud, and the ladies came back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, God. I got to be honest with you. Every time... Uh... It's. It, it, I'm reading the audio book or listening to the audio book, and I gotta tell you, every time he says green green light, it. I want to implement that into my life. <laughs> oh, that's. <laughs> it's like a positive affirmation that something good had just happened to you. So it's like you book the TV show, and then after that, you go green light. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So. Uh, I, I, what, but you know, it's like, it's interesting. Like sometimes like you see that one thing where he, he wants to, when he gets the ma uh, chainsaw massacre movie and he goes, I want to play that part. And they're like, well, can you be scary like that? I don't know if you can. And then he kind of just did something to the woman right there that wasn't yeah. on the script. Yeah, yeah. scared the shit out of her. And they're like, oh, my God, you got the part, right? If yeah, I yeah. did that, they'd fucking call 911 assault. <laughs> this fucking Italian wannabe actor all of a sudden starts choking me. Like, the one thing I like about this McConaughey doesn't really make any mention of the fact that on, uh, on certain days with the sun just right, he looks like a Greek god. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah. Oh god. <laughs> But so yeah, that's been, read, that's been a fun, yeah, fun listen, too. Uh, all right. We will see you guys next week right here on the Pete and Sebastian Show. Thanks again for sharing and Karen. And we will see you next Friday.